Okay, hello and welcome to uh, ProSharp's Q&A. Uh, we uh, got a lot of questions uh, from social media and we're gonna give it a good try to answer them as good as we can. Uh, my name is Pelle and I'm a salesman at ProSharp. My name is Mikko. I'm a salesman at the ProSharp as well. I've been working with the company for six years now. And my name is Niklas. I'm working with these two guys running the sales here. I uh, work at the company for almost eight years now. Okay, so we're going to do it like this today that I'm going to be uh, uh, the guy asking the questions and my colleagues here are going to answer them. So let's get going with the first question. Uh, how do I know which profile I shall have? Uh, that's a really good question and I, I feel that it, it really goes down to what you try to achieve or getting out of your skates. Let's say that you're a beginner, uh, you feel that your current skates you're lacking on balance for example, that would mean that you probably want to have a little bit of more ice contact. So that would mean the bigger radius. As opposed to if you're a yeah, young uh, starting player again and then you feel like you can't really turn that quick. So that would mean that you probably need a profile that turns a little bit quicker. There's a multiple different um, profiles that you can select from, but your reference point is the skates that you currently have. And knowing what kind of profile they might have, new skates that are sold from the store, and if you don't know the profile, the rough estimate is it's about a 10 foot single radius. And if you're a competitive player, then the game changes a little bit. Of course, you're gonna be finding a profile and trying to um, sort, of, sort of find out what is lacking on your skating, whether it's gonna be acceleration or your stability, or you wanna turn quicker, then you have like a full range of selection on various combination profiles. You can generally that um, competitive players they go superior, which is three radius profile series. Then there's a quad profile series has a four different radius, and then the latest one uh, ellipse series. Yeah, and here's the template list as well, where you can find on on our website on when you're going on machines, so you can read about all different profiles, what radius and radii they, they have. And there's also recommendation on what sizes you're gonna have for which which um, different profiles on the, on the sizes of the, of the skates. So you find that on the website. We do also have this one where you can use the skate size, and then you get the a, a recommendation on what profile. And we're also working to develop this one even more. But as Mikko said, it's all depending on, on what level you're skating on. And, um, and for example, if you're a beginner, we we're, we're highly recommend that you're going on a, on a long single radius to, to find the balance, to make it easier to, to, to skate. But our recommendation is that you profile all skates so that you know what you're skating on. The next question that we got is, uh how do I know when I need to sharpen my skates? Yeah, that's, uh, that's probably the most common question that people get in a skate shop or a sports store. And obviously the first thing is that you look your skates. After every skate you should check what condition the edges are. If you see huge uh, scrapes or edges off, it doesn't feel sharp, that identifies that you need a skate sharpening. Uh, another uh, common thing is that if you're when you're skating and you feel like there's not that bite anymore, when you're pushing with your feet that they slip a little bit, that could be ident that could ident identify that um, you need to have them resharpen. Yeah, yeah, I would say that try to to sharpen them as often as possible, because if you sharpen them like after every hour on ice or, or practice on ice, you don't have to sharpen them the mar uh, the same. Uh, as if you run like 10, 
time practice on them. Then you need to go for, for more cycles to get to get the edge back again. Exactly. And it depends yeah. on too if you know where you've been skating. If, you sk if you've been skating on out outdoor rings, chances are that there's going to be more sand and, yeah, and, and whatnot and so on, on yeah. the ice. Yeah. But say like this then, uh, if I'm a parent uh, to, to a son or a daughter and uh, uh, smaller kids maybe don't yeah, can explain or yeah. can tell you that the skates are not that sharp. Yeah. Uh, how, as a parent, should I could I check the blade for those scrapes, or do you have any tip tip on that? Absolutely, that's yeah. uh, that's what you want to check after every skate. Yeah. Like what yeah. the skates look because that that can be a like huge uh, no no for a kid if they're learning to skate but they can't really say why the skating doesn't feel good. But it might be just your edge is completely off and it yeah. feels really uncomfortable being on the ice. So as a parent, it's uh, it's important that skates get checked. And after the skate, obviously you need to dry them, yeah. and then that there's no rust on the plate because that might be that can be a issue as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. For the next question we got is, uh, will I feel any difference between different profiles? Yeah. Totally. Totally. You will feel a huge difference compared just for a 10 foot single radius to like a 13 foot single radius. Even that is, is a huge difference on, on feeling on ice with stability or maneuverability and, and all that and speed as well. And compared to like if you're going on a dual or, or triple radii and now with quad and, and ellipse series, it's, it's a different on all different templates. And as you can see on the list we have we have plenty of, of different. So the best thing is to, to try them out. And if you have a body with the, with the same same size of, of runners, now with the, for example, with the edge on, on the bower, it's so easy to just click it out from your body and try them on. Because exactly. that's that's the best way to, to feel, feel the difference yeah. and understand the difference as well. Yeah, and really understanding what, what, do you, uh, what are you lacking on skating? Yeah. If, uh, if you're like we talked about in the uh, first question that you lack in like you feel like you can't really accelerate that would probably mean that your one of your radius your front radius is too there's too much plate on the ice and if you don't have a power in your legs you can't release the feet when you're kicking them so sort of radius on on certain parts like front part of the skate that would help you on that if you feel like you're lacking on on balance the longer radius on a back part of a skate would most likely help you yeah so 100 percent you're gonna feel a difference between different profiles and like Nicholas was saying that there's so many different profiles and it doesn't mean that you need to try all of them you can narrow it down by trying to understand what happens in your skating what do you what do you really need yeah yeah and if you look at the picture we posted uh, a couple months ago on the um, 10 foot radius and 13 foot radius if you compare with with from center and five centimeter in front if you're going from the straight line on the lowest point it's the only difference from a 10 foot radius to a 13 foot radius is one post-it note mm -hmm. and it's a huge difference on ice exactly and it might be when like i've sometimes i've seen that people put two steel side by side being 13 foot and 10 foot radius and you try to look uh, against the light like is there any difference and some, somebody might say like oh like i don't think that there that really makes any difference but it might be tiny tiny difference on uh, per millimeters or fractions of millimeters but on the ice that uh, translates to a huge difference on the field yeah okay thank you next question is what is a hone what is a hone yeah uh, yeah what is a hone and why do i need to use it yeah uh, we made a video and and launched it on facebook and youtube and basically we showed how to use all the hones and why do you need it? The machine will do the job under the skate and you will have to do the job on the side of the skate because you get nicks and burrs uh, on the sides you need to remove them so you get a clean edge because if you don't use it you won't have the edge, a clean edge and you won't have the grip and you, there's no need to sharpen the skate. So, so what would happen if, if I sharpen the skate and, and I go out skating without honing them? Uh, will feel like they're dull or they will be dull 
you won't have an edge. You will just start. Will feel slippery. Yeah. yeah, and your bite angle is is obviously way yeah. different because there's that there's no sharp edge on it. And if you if we look the blade and if they're sharp, and there's a sharpening wheel underneath, and that would leave a little uh, metal residue burr on the sides here, and it would basically flatten like this. And if you go skating with them, that bite angle is just not going to help you really. So you need to either remove it and push it down and try to make that edge sharp as possible. So honing like cannot be overlooked. It's one of the most important features or elements in, in skate sharpening. Yeah. Okay. And like Niklas said, we, we just posted a video on Pro Sharp World on YouTube where you can uh, where you can see different steps in honing and how you hone different type of blades. That's a good point because the, the different metals, like this doesn't necessarily apply for a recreational skater, but if you're in a pro player or equipment manager, yeah. you need to take that into account as well, that steels are different. Now there's a titanium coatings on, on some of the steels. Some steels are harder than the others, so you might need to put a little bit more emphasis on it. When you sharpen skates and you try it with your finger, you can feel that little purr in here. Yeah. And when you hone them and they're correctly honed, and when you try it again, it's completely removed. Yeah. That's a good good thing to know when you hone. That you you can feel it with your finger when the honing is good and yeah. when it's not yeah, good. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next question. What means that the profile is pitched? Yeah, uh, easily explained explained is that we have moved the center point of the blade. Normally you move it backwards, so you easily can, can lean forward. Imagine that you're standing on a pipe, and you move the pipe backwards, you're falling forward. And if you move it forward, you will get more up straight when skating. So you move the lowest point on the profile. The superior series, quad series, and ellipse series, there we have pitched those profiles. Um, what do we feel that would fit for the skater the best? Yeah, and, and it doesn't mean that if you're a skater and you don't like it, you can offset the pitch, and that that's your personal preference. But we're just giving you like a guideline and what we feel it, uh, as per the ice testings and and so on and so forth. What what we feel would be the best fit in terms of profiling and pitching the pro, uh, the templates. Okay, so you said the superior series, quad series, and ellipse series are all pitched. From the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You will find more information as well on on the template list. We will write it out now with how many millimeters they're pitched directly on the template, so it will be easy for for everyone to find. Yeah. Or neutralize the yeah. the exactly. template if needed. 